Well hello folks, welcome to another short video tutorial from New SLLC. Today we're going to look at, at uh, resistance or resistors. Resistor operation for newbies. This is actually video number six in a series um, supporting uh, telephonic transmission and understanding thereof, but we need some technology fundamentals before we can get to that uh, more advanced subject. So this is number six in getting you there. Uh, the subject at hand for this uh, short video is the operation and terminology uh, relating to uh, resistors or resistance. Now ultimately resistors are electronic squeezers but typically we start off uh, with uh, basic electronics uh, using water pipe theory. It works pretty good for a basic understanding. So I've got a, a water pump up here that's going to be pumping water through a pipe over here and I've got a close-up of uh, a piece of the pipe right here and then it's going to bring the water back over to the pump because this is a closed system as is electronics uh, when we get to the little battery here in just a minute I'll show you it's the same idea so it's a closed system I pump water out over here at some pressure and some volume and it comes out over here right so in this instance I'm showing you that uh, the pump is creating a head pressure or a water pressure or an electrical pressure which we'll call voltage in just a moment but uh, it's uh, causing this pressure at 10 pounds per square inch and at 10 pounds per square inch it can push 10 liters I don't know about the spelling here that's why I put them both here I think this is the American spelling and this is everybody everybody else in the world um, so I can pump uh, 10 liters of water per second at 10 uh, pounds per square inch um, through through this pipe when it's this size right here so at the other end I'm going to come out with 10 liters because I push 10 liters in here at 10 psi but when it comes out the end of course um, it's going to be at a lo much lower pressure because the uh, molecules are banging around inside here dragging along the inside of the pipe and so on and so when it comes out over here it'll be at some lower pressure and, and I'm showing one pound per square inch because I don't know how much more pipe is left before we get over here to the uh, to the pump side but temp t technically we'd say it's zero pressure over here um, and then it gets sucked back in here and repressurized up to 10 pounds per square inch and then 10 liters come through this thing so we got 10 liters running through that's the current flow right there and this is the pressure being applied to cause that uh, current flow of water so if you're okay with that then let me do this I'm going to change something I'm going to change one piece of the pipe right here and put in a little tiny skinny pipe now this time I'm still going to have 10 pounds per square inch but the total flow through here is going to be less because now I have this little skinny pipe right here so it restricts the flow it squeezes down the flow so this time I'm only going to get five liters at 10 pounds per square inch because there, there's not enough room in here for all those molecules of water that were coming in here right originally we were able to get uh, 10 liters through but now this is restricting it right here so I get five liters per second through at the same pressure 10 pounds per square inch so I'm still dropping the total 10 pounds across the uh, pump right here still the same pressure but a lot less flow and why is that it's because I've increased the resistance in the transmission facility or in this case the pipe now once again over here I've got a much lower pressure you notice I have a 0.5 psi it's just kind of a guess uh, at this point because the five liters are going to come through here but because they're restricted in here and they can suddenly have more room over here so the out pressure at this point would be a bit less now once again I don't know how far in my little example this is away from the end of the pipe but technically speaking we would be at no pressure here right get sucked in here and push back out over here so you okay with this it's pretty obvious in a water pipe that when I make the pipe smaller I have less flow if I keep the pressure the same All right now how could I get more flow here well I could increase the pressure right run the pump faster but if the pressure stays the same and the resistance of the transmission facility or the pipe increases then I have less flow right less current flowing through so let's move over to the electronic part and we'll see that this uh, dry cell right here 
and I don't know what if it's a triple A or double A or an A or a C or a whatever it is. It doesn't matter. Um, so I've got an end-to-end -end pressure here. It's very much like um, our pump. You can think of this as kind of a little uh, chemical pump. So I've got a whole bunch of electrons over here on this end, a pressure over here on this end, and significantly fewer over here on this end caused by the, the chemicals inside the battery. So on my end-to-end -end pressure, that is at this end to that end, I'm going to just say it's one volt. Now, we all know it's usually a volt and a half, but to keep the numbers straight. So I've got an electrical pressure, uh, which was pounds per square inch on the water thing, but in this case, it's uh, electromotive force or voltage of one volt of pressure. And I have no end-to-end -end flow because I don't have a connection from here over to here, right? So you okay with that? Sure, pretty easy. All right, let's connect the two ends together. So now I still have pop probably, all right? And once again, this is very simplistic. I still have an end-to-end -end pressure of uh, one volt from here over to here, but now I've got some end-to-end -end flow, but I don't know, really know what this resistance is. I can tell you it's not absolutely zero, um, <clears throat> but we'll just say for right now that it is no, no resistance value. So wh what kind of a flow am I going to have? That is my intensity of my uh, amperes. I, I don't know, but I can tell you this general thing, because I've done this myself, is uh, the, the actual uh, current flow, the number of electrons leaving here and going over to here, is a function of how good the chemicals are inside this uh, dry cell. Um, you could have just a gigantic flow if the dry cell were uh, capable of sending a gigantic flow. Now, kind of what I'm getting at is this. If you take a piece of wire, this little piece of wire, and you stick it in your AC outlet at your house, what's going to happen to that piece of wire? It's going to literally explode. You're going to be jumping all over the place. And why is that? Because the wall socket, it's much higher voltage, of course, but it has the capability of sending up to typically around 15 amperes. Depends on what your circuit breaker is in your house before that circuit breaker pops. But if you didn't have the circuit breaker, how much could go through there? Well, it would be as big as the circuit uh, breaker outside on the um, uh, Edison pole or whoever's supplying your electricity. So we, there's an unlimited amount of energy that could be uh, uh, electrons that could be sent through this until the wire literally explodes or melts. So that's why I don't know what this is over here, although I'm telling you from past, past experience that these things can often uh, like a, a a D cell, one of the big D cells, they can they can throw a full amp through this thing for a little while. You can heat that wire up. You can basically make a toaster out of this if you just put a, a, a raw piece of wire between the two ends. And uh, will the voltage actually be one volt? Well, uh, for a little while, right? Until the chemicals just can't supply uh, that amount of current. So moving on because we really want to talk about the resistance thing. So I'm going to put a resistor in here. This is a schematic drawing for a resistor measured in ohms right here or using this little horseshoe looking thing. So I've got uh, now in this instance I put a one ohm resistor in here. All right. So now I still have a one volt uh, supply over here and it's pushing electrons through the circuit over here, but now, now they're restricted because I've got a one ohm resistor in there. All right. So what happens then is I end up with one ampere of flow, electron flow, and we know this because if you had gone through the earlier uh, tutorials, you'd know that current intensity equals uh, voltage divided by the resistance. All right. So my voltage is one. Right? and my resistance is 1, so therefore I can draw 1 amp, providing that the chemicals in here are sufficient to be able to do that. Right? So 1 amp at 1 volt equals 1 watt. Once again, if you had gone through our earlier tutorial, you'd understand the relationship here. So I'm actually expending 1 watt of energy. This thing is it's heating up. Right? It's, it's, once again, kind of like a toaster. So it's heating up. Um, so therefore, my end-to-end -end pressure, my voltage is one volt. My end-to-end -end flow is one amp. 
using this very very simple circuit and, and here's a look, kind of an interesting thing for you yet another name another old geezer with a beard uh, 6.242 times 10 to the 18th electrons per second equals one coulomb of energy uh, one coulomb I'm sorry of electrons and we're counting the electrons um, just another name for you to kind of remember there's a bazillion of them in electronics but uh, speaking of toasters down here there's a really interesting video if you're interested in this I think you should go look because you'd kind of wonder gee how much uh, energy does it take to make a piece of toast well there's this video right here this YouTube video where it's uh, there's a, a gentleman with the biggest legs I've ever seen in my life gets on a stationary bicycle that's attached to a generator and proceeds to try to make toast in a 700 watt toaster and it's amazing how much human energy it takes to make to make a piece of toast it's quite entertaining so you know if you think uh, one watt of energy is enough no you need about a 700 watt toaster to make a piece of toast so yeah kind of an interesting thing so now what's happening here is I've got one volt of uh, pressure difference between here and here right you have to have the, the two sides of this so if I come down here do I have uh, one volt of drop across this yeah actually I do because I'm saying kind of at this point that uh, there's no resistance in the wire in fact there actually is of course but uh, so what happens is my voltage drop is is across this I've got one volt of drop because I've got one volt of pressure being generated up here now let's put another thing into it I'm going to put two resistors in two one ohm resistors once again I've got uh, one volt of pressure being generated out of this uh, um, dry cell right here so I'm still going to drop one volt from here to here if I took a, a meter and measured it I'm still going to drop one volt from here to here but now that I have two ohms of resistance in here I decrease my current flow down to a half of an ampere and I'm dropping half of the one volt right here right so I'm dropping a half a volt over one ohm resistance and I'm dropping the other half of the one volt over this resistor right here one ohm resistor so my end-to-end -end pressure is still one volt from here to here or that is from here to here I've got one volt of drop but when I look at the components in the circuit I'm dropping half of it here and half of it here so my end-to-end -end pressure is still one volt my end-to-end -end flow is now reduced to half of what it was before because I've doubled the resistance in the circuit so now when you get into real uh, working circuits often these things are in parallel or just all kinds of mixtures of uh, the resistive value uh, the load will say in a working circuit so this can get very complicated um, and we're not going to go there so as long as you understand I put resistance in series I still have the total drop from the source but the drop is split between the two in this instance devices so what do these things look like well these are uh, examples out of the uh, kids tricity uh, course that I uh, teach uh, these are the components and these this is huge this is a, a very large resistor by today's standards um, and unless you're a hobbyist or something you probably would never run into one of these because all the resistors nowadays are tiny little microscopic things on a chip but um, this one here it's easy to see easy to handle it's a hundred ohm resistor and here's the schematic representation for it and then in this particular kit it's labeled as resistor number one uh, this is a fixed resistor um, it's got some color codes here to tell you what its value is if you know how to read the color code you know it's a hundred ohm resistor um, this one is a, a resistor variable once again out of the kit and this has a slider thing here there's a little kind of wire wrapped thing underneath this slider so you can change the resistance value between these uh, two posts here to here or from here to here so it's a variable resistor you use variable res resistors no doubt you tune uh, your radio with the knob it's not the electronic type or not your smartphone type but if you got one of the old radios that have knobs uh, it uses this kind of a thing just a slightly different physical layout but uh, it's still a variable resistor 
This one down here is a photo resistor. It changes its internal resistance depending on how much light is coming down in the little hole. So there's lots and lots of uh, variations on what resistors can look like from tiny little microscopic things to great big gigantic things um, that uh, kind of regulate power applications. Although usually those aren't, uh, they're not usually called resistors in the sense of um, these, you know, they're like um, rheostats. Uh, sometimes these are called potentiometers, you know. So a lot of different names, but they basically they're doing the same thing. They're squeezing electron flow. So that's what resistors do, and that's what resistance is. So thanks for watching. Um, you might want to uh, back up if you didn't understand everything I said and um, watch some of the earlier uh, tutorials. And if you're interested in more depth on these, because I'm trying to keep these very, very short, uh, you can look up some of our more... Um, extensive tutorials in the Kidtricity group or uh, some of the basic electronics group in our playlists. So thanks for watching. 10-4 Rubber Ducky over and out.